Hi everybody, I'm Jessamy and this is Lit Crush. <laughs> so it's Sunday, September 5th, 2021, and I'm back with you. Having finished my assignment, Judy Bloom's Tiger Eyes. This was drawn out of a hat. I had seven or eight suggestions from um, my viewers and uh, Tracy, my good friend Tracy from San Antonio, Texas, uh, suggested Tiger Eyes because she read it as a third grader. She read this as a third grader, y'all. And her teacher got mad at her. And now I know why. It's, a t it's, it's YA. This is young adult fiction. The protagonist is 15. She's dating a 20-year-old. Her father has been murdered in cold blood. And she has PTSD. <laughs> but uh, young Tracy must have been a precocious reader. Tracy, I admire you because th this book had some big ideas and some big words in it. And, uh, you know, apparently it's still popular judging by the dog ears that my library copy has. Several pages dog-eared. So, to back up a minute, Judy Bloom wrote Tiger Eyes in 1981, and this reissue was, um, you know, rebranded in 2013. That's why it looks so contemporary with the cover art. Um, so, it's a story about Davy. It's a 15-year-old girl whose father is murdered in front of their, I think it's like a convenience store in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And the family kind of falls apart. It's There were four of them, mother, father, Davy, and her younger brother, Jason. Um, but they're all grieving so, so hard that they end up moving to Los Alamos to be closer to family, uh, specifically Aunt Bitsy and um, Uncle Walter. And Uncle Walter works uh, as a, like a nuclear physicist at Los Alamos, and uh, they are kind of overprotective, controlling people <laughs> that Davy doesn't like very much. So she tends to escape by going for hikes in the canyon. And uh, she meets a young man in the canyon, a mysterious young man. And there's a bit of a romance involved. There's a lot of sort of PTSD and grief. There's a, a hesitation for Davy to remember the exact circumstances of her father's death. And there is a lot, I forgot in the late 70s, early 80s, I forgot how like gritty teenage media could be. I mean, there are, there are a few words in here that would make any book that I wrote today unpublishable. Uh, derogatory words that were just in casual use. And I think Judy Bloom must have been committed to kind of a verisma, kind of a, a gritty realism. She wanted to show not idealized families. And uh, this family is not idealized at all. Um, at one point, the teenage girl gets slapped by an uncle who is not necessarily like irredeemably bad as a character. I mean, that's not something you'd find in a book today either. So it was kind of like, I recall Judy Bloom being vaguely controversial when I was a kid, and now I kind of, I understand why, because Bloom was really trying something new with the realism. She wanted to show families actually in crisis, a family that might actually be dealing with um, teenage alcoholism, uh, casual domestic abuse, um, street violence, um dating someone that's five years older than you when you're 15, like it's no big whoop. <laughs> so I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed this insight into Tracy's, young Tracy's reading life. Uh, so Judy Bloom, Tiger Eyes, it's my first Judy Bloom novel. I know that Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret was sort of her most famous one, at least from my point of view. Uh, so I'll have to check out more of them, but it's evergreen. I mean, this has been published most... This was published in 2013. I'm sure it's still in print. A uh, beloved author, um, uh, some committed to realism. Sometimes it goes into melodrama, for sure. It's not just strictly speaking um, realistic. It's a page turner. Uh, 
but uh, she has an impressive catalog of, of books that continue to be published. And, you know, I really hope they don't, um, I hope it doesn't succumb to some sort of um, editing or um, uh, censorship because it, it does give you a little slice of life of attitudes in the 80s and 70s. Uh, it was a different time, for sure. So that's Tiger Eyes. The other book I wanted to talk with you guys about was uh, a book that I'm reading with a neighbor and her daughter, Where the Crawdads Sing. Thanks to Esther and Rebecca for recommending this book. It's also a Reese's Book Club book, and I think there's a movie in production. This is also about a young lady, Kaya. I think in, in this book she's like 21, 23. She is a young woman who lives, I think, kind of a in a shack in a North Carolina estuary or swamp or marsh. And uh, the author, Delia Owens, apparently had, had a, a long career as a nature writer before she wrote her first novel. Uh, and now it's being made into a motion picture with, I think, the help of Reese's uh, production company. So I'm looking forward to reading this. I had just finished Olympus, Texas, and so my neighbors and I thought we would pair a North Carolina book with the Texan book and have sort of a, a Southern-themed um, book, book event at some point. So Where the Crawdads Sing, so far the writing has been really lyrical and beautiful, and the setting is very, very strong in this book. Also about a young woman whose mother um, went through a crisis in the middle of their childhood and through the family into kind of a, a people. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm reading right now. I am also writing, uh, again, writing more on my book, uh, which I, I think I, I'm going to call it Rebirth Day. It's uh, also a 15-year-old protagonist, and so I'm, I'm learning a lot by reading these little books. What else is new with me? Um, we have had every sort of disaster in our house. We had flooding in our basement. We had leaking from our ceiling. Uh, when Elizabeth went back to school, we all c came down with like upset tummies for a while. So I'm just very happy to be uh, in one piece in my house with a bunch of workers coming soon to fix all the leaking parts of my house. That would That's gonna be a good thing when that's all done. <laughs> um, I wanted to also show you a few of some artwork from old titles that I picked up online. Uh, if you recall, one of my first videos, I did a, a book review of an Ellen Conford book, and I haven't read these yet, but I do remember the cover art from when I was a kid. Dear Lovey Heart, I Am Desperate was one. Seven Days to a Brand New Me. <laughs> Just... Oh my gosh, this just takes me right back to junior high and elementary school. Royal Pain was a book I read several times. I owned a copy of A Royal Pain. I really enjoyed that book. I'll, I'll have to do a proper book review on it soon. And then this, I found The Girls of Canby Hall. This is one of those um, kind of, uh, what do you call it? Would it be a pot boiler? Kind of a, a, a long series of books by... Uh, Emily Chase, who might, I don't know if that's a real person or a collection of authors that followed a, you know, kind of a formula. But the Girls of Canby Hall was my first glimpse into dorm life uh, as a young woman, and I was fascinated. <laughs> I can't wait to reread a book like this. They're, they're often, you know, centered around romance and stuff, fashion and romance. Um, so, thanks for joining me. I am taking more suggestions for what YA books I should read next, please let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe to this as well as the Substack. That's jessamineiger.substack.com. Um, I, uh, I love to hear from you guys. And I think maybe we'll have another short video soon where I draw another title out of the hat. But first, I want to give you a chance to suggest what you're reading and uh, what you're into and what you're crushing on lately. Um, the last thing I wanted to tell you about was White Lotus on HBO Max. This is a, a drama, uh, a dramedy, I would say. It's dramatic and comedic about a family vacationing in Hawaii. Uh, and 
sort of a collision of people of different groups, people with money, people without money, people that identify into different ethnic groups, grappling with, I think, kind of post-colonial Hawaii is how I would say it. And, uh, and there's a very strong casting between Connie Britton, who plays a, like a mid-50s successful mother of a teenage girl, uh, Olivia. Olivia is the daughter, and the mom is Connie Britton, and the dad is Steve Zahn, and then there's a best friend, Paula, um, who I believe her name is Brittany in real life. The chemistry between those four is they talk about sort of uh, social issues is hilarious. Like, everyone is sort of outspoken, everyone has definite opinions, but they're very generational and they get right in each other's faces and, and uh, both generations have kind of their hubris and their pride and uh, they are happy to call one another out on a regular basis. And it's really funny and uh, really well written. Uh, so th that tension between the mother and daughter reminded me of White Lotus. Tiger Eyes and White Lotus reminded me of one another and how differently these topics are handled between the generations. It's pretty interesting. So. Uh, thanks for uh, watching with me, and I'll be uh, looking for your recommendations this week so that we can have another quick drawing, and we can decide what we're going to talk about next. All right. Don't forget to subscribe and comment below and tell me what to read. All right. We'll see you later. Bye. Hi, everybody. It's just me. Hi, everybody. It's just me, and welcome back to... <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Jessamy and you're watching Lit Crush.